Hey guys, welcome back. This is Goldie again. And in this video, I will help you understand Google Vault's terminology. There are some technical jargons that initially I didn't get it, so I simplified them for myself. And hopefully that might help you understand those as well. So let's start with the first one, which is matter in Google Vault. So if I'm a lawyer and I have 10 different cases, right? And I need to make sure that I have a unique folder where I'm gonna put every piece of information like all the evidences and all the uh, paperwork for that specific case in one folder. So think of matter as that folder. So let's say if you get a new investigation case saying investi investigate this specific case of uh, let's say abuse, then this you will create a folder and you will start putting all the uh, paperwork and you know all the evidence related to that specific case in that folder, right? So it's like your one piece stuff. Similarly, uh, in Google Vault, when you're running an investigation, first you will create a matter, and then in this matter, you will put everything in it, like your uh, emails or your evidence and everything that will go in this matter. So it's nothing more than a folder where you will put every evidence related to that specific case. And please note that whenever you are running an investigation, before you are able to see the search screen in Google Vault where you can search data related to any specific case, you are required to create a matter. So you will create a matter first, name it, and then you will see the option to search. And once you search, you should be able to export if required. So that was Google Vault Matter, which is a folder for a specific investigation. So now let's talk about the hold in Google Vault. What is a hold? Now, when you set up Google Vault, you uh, define your data retention policies with the help of the retention rules, be it the default retention rule or the custom retention rule. And if you want to learn more about those, you can uh, watch my other video here. But you do not want your retention rules to delete data when you are doing a, an active investigation. And that's where hold comes in. So whenever you are investigating, it's a good practice to create a hold so that even if data retention uh, policy or period is expired, still data related to your investigation should not be deleted. So if I'm investigating a new case where I need to fetch all the email exchanges between user A at mydomain.com and user B at mydomain.com for the last six months, first thing ideally I should do is create a hold put those two users on hold so that any data should not be deleted even if the retention period expires. So that where holds comes in. Uh, now let's look at the third one, which is search. Well, it is, it is not a technical jargon. It's a very uh, user-friendly word. So in Google Vault, uh, you know, you can search in different uh, ways. So for example, when you go to your lawyer, your lawyer would try to uh, get as much information as uh, he can by asking you questions. Uh, maybe tell me about that time or this time, what exactly happened. Google Vault Search Console is exactly like that. So you can ask questions in variety of ways. I mean, you can define your conditions. For example, you can say, show me all the emails uh, which were exchanged between user A and user B uh, during the month of uh, March 2019. And then you can you know, define your search criteria. For example, you can either go tenant-wide or organizational unit-wide. You have uh, date filters there. And you can also use operators, like you can use AND and ORs, so you can even define your complex search criteria, and then it will show you all the search options. So that is search in Google Vault. Now let's talk about another one, which is export data. Again, this is not a technical jargon, but as we're talking about it, let's cover that too as well. 
So once you search the data, it's, it's digital, but in case if you need to, let's say, uh, take it with you somewhere as an evidence, you might need to print it out and put that in the folder somewhere. So for that, you can use export functionality. Once you search, you will see the search results. You can then export the data, which will be a CSV file. Now, one, off, uh, one uh, watch point here that I'm looking at is you can export uh, emails in PST or MBOX uh, format, which are pretty standard for email. You may have export in multiple files. If the file size is more than one gigabyte for PST, for MBOX, it's 10 gigabytes. Okay, exports you know, are available uh, from 15 days whenever they are started before Google deletes them. So when you perform your search, you click on export, that export will stay there for 15 days. Within those 15 days, you can download it. If you don't download it, it will be deleted by Google. You can also uh, choose the geographic region to save your exports, whether it's United States or Europe. Okay, so that was a bit uh, about Google Vault terminology. Hopefully that might give you a little bit of information, especially in Google Vault matter and hold understanding. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, put that under this video and I'll be happy to help and keep watching the other videos about Google Vault. Thank you so much.